I taught at Yale and Cornell, yeah. University of Virginia, and I always say the same thing, that no doubt this is going to be the most important art form of the late 20th century, but it's probably going to take a hundred years before the rest of the people figure that out. This is Theodore's original manuscript talking about how he invented the scratch. I love when early DJs would glue 45s that had brakes on them on 12s just so that they could scratch the brake. This is Bombada's copy of the Pachi brake. Mm -hmm. However, it's not the only copy right. because there's like five or six of them. And the reason, which is so delightful, is that he would misplace it. He couldn't find it. And it's a brake that he used so much and then he would buy another copy and another oh copy gosh. and another copy. Tell me about this sweatshirt. Oh, that's about Bam Wert DJing around 80, 81. He wrote down the names of other artists. So that's his handwriting? Yeah. And this is, of course, the Bombada Planet Rock costumes. I was excited to have a signed Jay Dilla record because mm -hmm. they never show up in the wild. This is like a giant almost graffiti display across like classic hip hop records. Yeah. This is a couple of Keith Haring originals. They're done in Sharpie on architectural paper. And what happens with a Sharpie when the paper is 40 years old? And they're signed by Haring. These are all from the pop shop? No, this is pre-pop shop. This is, this, is when, uh, this is when Herring was still doing his own silk screen. There might be like a couple of pop shop pieces in there, but I think pretty much everything is pre-pop shop. This is all civil rights material. This can mess with anybody's head because this is signed by Martin Luther King and Martin Luther King's dad the week that it was announced that he won the Nobel Prize. And it's his dad's church. This is a box of extraordinarily rare Black Panther publications. All originals. You know, hey, it's not my hip hop museum, so it's not for me to say, but right. in my opinion, does this belong? Right. Yeah, I think it does. Right. These are all from the early 80s. The first one has Sefer, Sharp, Revolt, Dondi, Stash 2, Futura, and Days. These are the only original uh, gang vests that I've seen in 30 years. The Buddy Esquire clothing, we hung up some examples here. This is all of uh, Buddy's, Buddy. Buddy's hand-painted uh, clothing that he was uh, trying to sell on Fordham Road. All originals, some of them are in super mint condition because they came from when I dug out the Body Esquire storage space. Cold Crash 4, Charlie Chase, yeah. Treacherous, so that means that it's probably 81 or 82. Yeah. This is Duke Reed's amp. So, this is the actual amp that Duke Reed and his engineer used to invent the version B-side. Like literally, this is where instrumentals come from. Yes, this is the birth of DJ culture. Shug Knight uh, doing a third annual single mother's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all, you know, golden age backstage passes, run DMC, public enemy, beasties, all that kind of stuff. Because it's weird, because when it comes to like corporate white people rock, they save everything. And like hip hop people just toss it right. as soon as they've left the backstage area. Right. Right. Which is much cooler. You know, it's, it's exactly the same as the early history of jazz, early history of blues, gospel, 
you know, African American activism is that they were too busy living it to document it. And that's when strange, very tall Swedish men come in. <laughs>